Rest 220, talking about the mode of pressure control CMV and pressure control IMV. So, this is where we're going to talk about pressure control CMV and pressure control IMV. We've got the same ventilator set up, the 840, but now we're in the mode of pressure control, continuous mandatory ventilation. This mode is very different from going ventilation in that we are establishing a set pressure that's going to be delivered at the mouth. This pressure is going to be held for a period of time until we get equalization between the ventilator, or the mouth pressures, and the lung pressures. This mode is different in that as patient lung characteristics change, so it doesn't matter if compliance decreases or compliance increases, the pressure being delivered to the lungs will remain the same. So, unlike volume ventilation, we're specifically controlling the pressure and volumes and flow rates will be allowed to vary. In volume ventilation, volume and flow were held constant and pressure could vary. In this mode, pressure is held constant and volume and flow may vary. We'll look at the controls in just a second. Important to realize, though, that we can allow mandatory breaths, so the, if the patient's unconscious, we've got a rate set of 12 here, every 5 seconds the ventilator will give a mandatory breath, so it can be time triggered. If the patient initiates a breath, that's allowed, but the ventilator will deliver our preset conditions of a specific pressure held for a specific period of time. That would be a patient trigger or an assisted breath and it would be controlled entirely by the ventilator. So whether it's time triggered and mandatory or patient triggered and assisted breath, the ventilator controls all aspects of that delivered breath. So here we have our usual setup with the 840 ventilator hooked up through our passive humidity system to our test lung. Again, we're measuring both mouth pressures and lung pressures across a known resistance. In this case, it's a known resistance. Usually it would be an endotracheal tube. We've got the compliance set on our test lung, which we can vary. Our ventilator controls in the mode of a cyst control or CMV and pressure control, we set a specific pressure that's going to be delivered to our patient. We can see the pressure waveform builds up and is being held constant. And we're going to deliver or hold that breath for two seconds. So those are our parameters that we can set. We've got a flow triggering set mechanism here. We've got an FiO2 and a baseline pressure or our PEEPS set. So we, during this mode, What's happening on the mandatory breath is that the pressures in the circuit build up and are being held to a preset value. So it's time triggered, pressure limited, and it's time, time cycled as well. All right. So you see the flow rate initially builds up quickly and then tapers down as pressures in the lung start to build up and then eventually we have a little inspiratory plateau here and then exhalation occurring. If we look over here at our test lung and our spe very specialized screen here, we can see the difference between the mouth pressures in red and the lung pressures. You can see that they achieve an equilibrium for a specific period of time. The flow rate, high initially, and de declines as the volume in the lungs equalize and the pressures in the lungs equalize. And then, of course, we go into, there's inspiration and then exhalation occurring. So this waveform is particularly interesting because we can see the effects of resistance. That separation between the red and white lines is the effects of resistance. When flow stops, we have equilibrium between mouth pressures and lung pressures. And that's important in this particular mode in pressure control because we're always achieving equilibrium if we have a long enough TI set, which of course we should. So in the mode of pressure control, CMV, as the patient's lung characteristics change, as their compliance decreases, the pressure in the lungs is held constant. 
So the volume will be less if you're decreasing compliance. If the patient has increased compliance, so the lungs are more distensible, the pressure being delivered to the lungs is going to remain constant. So the volume will now be larger. The effects of resistance usually don't change that much with our patients because that's mostly controlled by the endotracheal tube, that small diameter endotracheal tube. That doesn't vary greatly. But changes in resistance and compliance do determine how quickly the lungs will achieve equilibrium between mouth pressures and the alveoli. That's our time constant. Remember, resistance and compliance determine our time constants. So if you know the resistance of your patient and you know their compliance, which we can measure off the ventilator, you can determine how long your pressure must be maintained to have equilibrium between mouth and the alveoli. On our mechanical ventilator, we can actually see where that's occurring because we have a decline in the inspiratory flow rate to zero, proving to us that we have an inspiratory pause or equilibrium between mouth pressures and alveolar pressures. Pressure control ventilation is often utilized as a lung protective strategy. When we are talking about volume ventilation, it's a really good mode to ventilate our patients when we know nothing about them and we would just want to establish a particular alveolar minute ventilation. With pressure control, that's clearly an objective, but also we want to limit the amount of pressure being delivered to the lungs themselves of the alveolar. So often we use pressure control to limit pressures to the lungs, thus allowing it to be controlled and it's considered a lung protective strategy. So a patient who's in the intensive care unit with a severe lung disease such as adult respiratory distress syndrome, this may be a preferred mode of ventilation to help protect the lungs from overpressurization. Some other interesting aspects about this mode, because I control the length of time the pressure is being held there, I can control mean airway pressure. And that's a way of also helping with oxygenation and distribution of ventilation. Remember, oxygenation is also often controlled with the FiO2 of the ventilator. But clearly, I need a specific amount of minute ventilation as well. The minute ventilation helps me control the pH and the PaCO2 of my patients. So that's the, basically the mode of pressure control. If we switch now to pressure control SIMV, what happens now is that the patient is delivered or set a certain number of mandatory breaths, just like in volume control. But in this case, with the pressure limit mechanisms involved. So, I'm going to deliver 12 breaths per minute. And if that patient is unconscious, I'm getting 12 breaths per minute. I go from exhalation to inspiration due to time. So I have a rate of 12, so every 5 seconds, the ventilator will trigger into inspiration. And that's going to be my time trigger. During inspiration, I've got a pressure limit established. So the pressure is going to be held, and it cycles off when I've reached a preset time. So time triggered, pressure limited, time cycled would be the way I would describe this mode. So pressure control ventilation has a time trigger, pressure limited, time cycle element to it. Now in SIMV, I can also have spontaneous breaths. The spontaneous breaths are unassisted. So the patient can breathe any time in between those five second windows for the mandatory breaths. And the mandatory breaths can be patient triggered as well. So they would be patient triggered due to either pressure or flow. So patient triggered, that would be an assisted breath. And it's going to be pressure limited and time cycled. So my patient can trigger the ventilator by creating a negative inspiratory flow or negative pressures in the circuit. And every breath would be pressure limited and time cycle. Now in the mode of IMV, you're only going to receive the set number of breaths as you've established on the ventilator. 
the other breaths in between there are going to be spontaneous, unassisted breaths. So the spontaneous would be unassisted. The patient would be doing all the work by themselves. So in the mode of pressure control, it's defined by the limit to the critical element. The limit is the pressure it's set, and it's the time it's set. Those are the key elements of pressure control. 